Uh, anyway, the coach today is going to provide us with some outstanding tips uh, on, on leadership. Uh, this is a coach that joined just over two years ago. So get that, just two years ago. Uh, she, sharp woman. She is uh, really bringing Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to the map and making things really, really happen. But let me tell you a little bit about her. She started in June of 2011. She was a 2012 elite coach. Get this. She was the number one recruiter in September of 2013, and out of a almost 135,000 coaches. She is currently in second place for the 2013 Elite Coaches. We have a leaderboard that shows where people are stacked up uh, as it relates to elite points in the entire company, and she is in second place. Uh, we were having fun with her name before uh, because of all the M's that we could put together with it, so I'm going to string them together. This is none other than the magnanimous, the marvelous, the magnificent mom from Mars, Melanie, 12-star diamond coach, Melanie Mitros. Melanie, how was that for an intro? That is awesome. <laughs> that is a great intro. Thank you. You just have to remind your kids next time. When they start to give you a little bit of grief, you just need to say, hey, now, magnanimous, marvelous, <laughs> uh, all of these things and magnificent. So anyway, hey, so Melanie, uh, just a little over two years in the business, and you've done some, some pretty remarkable things. Right now you're in second place on the elite coach uh, leaderboard, but um, there was a beginning to your Beachbody career. Why don't you just tell us a little bit how you came into Beachbody? Sure. All right. So, as you said, I am a mom, and um, I about two years ago, I um, was sitting in my my living room, and um, you know, I I used to work full time, so I was the director of an early intervention program in our area. So I worked with kids birth to three. And so when I had my first child, Landon, who is now four, I had cut back to part-time, so we decided to, to cut back my hours so I could be home a little bit more. You know, and then we made the decision for me to quit and stay home altogether. So that happened when Bryce, who is my youngest, was born. You know, and like you said before, we live about 20 minutes north of Pittsburgh in a town called Mars, Pennsylvania. And so living for us was typical. It was typical mom life. That's what I call it. You know, I went to mom's groups. I had friends over for play dates. I had laundry, cleaning the house, just taking care of things for my kids. They were my first priority. And, you know, we have great family and friends and a wonderful neighborhood we live in. But myself, I was tired. I was a little frustrated with myself and my body. And, you know, I was feeling pretty unattractive in my skin. And I was really feeling guilty for disliking the body that I had because I really, I had two beautiful children that were perfectly healthy, but I kind of felt myself becoming envious of all the other moms out there that rebounded very quickly after having a pregnancy. And so I found myself looking for an answer that was affordable, something that I could do from home and stick with. And so that's how Beachbody sort of entered my life. That's when my, co my coach found me because of a post that I had made on Facebook about wanting to lose weight after having a baby. And if I recall, the actual post talked about me sitting on my couch eating celery and talking about how awful it was to have to lose weight. And so she invited me to be in her challenge group, which I agreed to knowing nothing about what it was. But she told me I had to pick a fitness program, and actually at that time, Shakeology was optional. And so I borrowed Insanity from a friend. I didn't even buy it through her, and I did not drink Shakeology when I started, And um, which was, you know, I, it, it leads me to my next point. But anyway, so after the first few weeks of being in the challenge group, I was downright just hooked. I loved the support, the motivation, the accountability, and the fact that everyone was so willing to help and support me in my journey. You know, as a stay-at-home mom, it was perfect for adult interaction without having to go out and drag my kids to the gym, especially when it's cold because it gets freezing cold here in western Pennsylvania. And this was really just the beginning of an amazing journey. So this kind of leads me to what really motivated me to become a coach. Um, I can tell you that first and foremost, I fell in love with the idea of challenge groups. That is my passion for this business. And I just had this vision for how I could use this structure to really help other people. And so 
it was it wasn't until I publicly posted my transformation pictures that I realized that I truly wanted to become a coach. Now, let me tell you, I sat in front of my computer for at least 30 minutes waiting to press that publish button because I was deathly afraid of what others were going to say. I mean, I was literally exposing myself at my lowest point. I was overweight. I was unhappy. And let's face it, I had a lot of high school and college friends that I didn't want to see, that I didn't want them to see the state that I was in. And also, my after picture, I wasn't even at my ultimate weight loss goal that I had in my mind. I still felt like I had a lot of work left to do. But all I could think about was that if I could inspire just one person to make a positive change in their life, that being vulnerable was totally worth it. The inspiration and hope that I had provided to people when I posted my results, that fired me up. The fact that I was able to motivate others by my own transformation was exciting. And I wanted to teach everyone else exactly how I did it. And I couldn't wait to get started. But there was a roadblock along the way. It was our lack of flexible spending. As a stay-at-home mom with one income, we did not have fluff in our budget to go out to dinner, to even take little day trips, or go on family vacations. When people would call us to go out in the evenings, we had to decline because it wasn't in our budget. So clearly, we did not have resources to buy Shakeology. So that was not an easy sell to the man who controlled the finances. But me, being the stubborn and the driven person that I am, I found a way. And I saved up all of my money from my birthday to purchase Shakeology and at that time pay a $40 coach sign-up fee because we didn't have challenge packs then to become a coach. So I started P90X after Insanity. I started drinking Shakeology and I began my own challenge groups. And I never looked back. I never questioned whether or not this was the right move for me. I just knew this is what I was meant to do. You know that feeling in your gut that you just can't ignore? I had that feeling, which kind of leads me to my aha moment that I had as a coach. You know, I was just kind of rolling along, starting my own challenge groups, helping other people get their results. I was working hard to reach a goal. And for me, that goal was just hitting Success Club every single month. And I really wasn't even sure that I saw the bigger picture of what Beachbody could ultimately provide for me and my family. And it wasn't until I was asked to be on a cup team, and it was Lindsay Matway, and she invited me to be on our cup team, and I had been a coach for six months. I was scared to death to let the team down. I mean, being a brand new coach, I had no idea what I was doing, and the superstar coach was asking me to be on her team, and I panicked. But I never let it show. You know, in my mind, I just strategized. I made a game plan well before the cup even started. I knew what my challenge group dates were going to be. I thought of all the different ways I could invite people to be in a group, different angles to approach it, and I beefed up my own game as well. I had a challenge group scheduled every two weeks, and during that cup challenge, I surprised myself at what I was capable of doing when I put my mind to it. I was a brand new coach that capped out in the amount of points that I could earn per team member, and I had blown up my business with new challengers and coaches, and I felt like the underdog that had to prove that I deserved that spot. And I proved to myself that I could really make this business work for me. It was at that point that I realized that this was going to happen. You know, everybody was getting results. I was signing up some coaches, and my excitement was building. And so that's what really led me to the point where I just knew that coaching was for me. It was the fact that somebody else believed in me that I could do it. It challenged me and set me on fire. And now I was starting to see that bigger picture and what this business could do for me and my family. So that's just a little bit about me and how I got started as a Beachbody coach, Jeff. You know, one of the things, I don't know that you said this specifically, Melanie, but uh, we talked about this before the call, is as you got started, every single thing that you did as a coach, as a new coach, you weren't ready to really do. But you, but you did it. And that's when the belief came. As you put yourself out there, you kind of walked to the edge and you stepped into the darkness, so to speak. You know, mm-hmm. that's where the growth came, and that's where the belief came, and the and the, and the growth and the growth came. Um, so, you know, I think that's a great message for for new coaches uh, to to take that advice. Sometimes it, you're never going to be ready. Just go. You got to jump. Right. Right. So, so I know that you've got some thoughts that you also wanted to share today on on leadership. 
on, on what that looks like. And, of course, I think lots of times people look at leadership, and that means they're looking at Carl Dykler and say, ah, he's leading a, a huge organization. But the leadership is about leading people, but it's also about leading yourself. Uh, but why don't you just share some of the thoughts that you've put together and gleaned as you've grown your business? Sure, absolutely. So I want everybody to really remember that I was once a brand-new coach, too, with very real fears about where this business was going to take me. I was sitting in the exact same spot that a lot of you may be sitting in right now. As a new coach, you have a ton of information, especially in that coach online office. It's hard to know where to start, where to begin. You have all these thoughts going through your mind of, what if I fail? What if I say something wrong? I mean, those thoughts go through every single one of us. It doesn't matter who you are. And we all have to start somewhere. So with that being said, my first tip for you is to start now versus someday. So every single thing I have done as a coach, I was not ready to do. I started my first challenge group before I had my post ready. I advertised for the challenge group before I had customers. I ran a challenge group before I was even at my personal weight loss goal. I had no idea where it was going to take me, but I was excited, and I had to tell everybody about it. And I invited people. I actually got my first challengers and had just a little momentary freak out because um, I just wasn't sure what to do next. But, you know, I picked myself back up and I developed a strategy. I asked my coach if I could team up with her instead of running a group on my own. And that eased some of my fears. I had this running list of things that I wanted to post about in my challenge group, you know, tricks that I had up my sleeves for things that worked for me. So I created this list of posts that I found inspirational that I wanted to share with my challengers, and I just put it in a Word document so that I could reference back to it when I needed an idea. You know, I come across so many coaches who say that they need to have their like page perfect or um, they need to have their blog stock with posts before they go live and share it. You know, they need to have their transformation before they can lead other people. But honestly, it's just baloney. I can tell you that it's, it's that mentality of someday when the conditions are right, that's, that's what's going to hold you back. There will never be a perfect time when all the stars align, when the conditions are right. Life will always have challenges for you. But it's the people that jump feet first. They tell their story and they say, follow me. I'm a work in progress, but I'm going to teach you everything I know and watch my success story happen. I can guarantee you that over time, people will be banging down your door to get your tips. If you put yourself out there, you stay consistent on your word, and you take that leap of faith before you're ready, that's what brings about change. For example, every week um, of a program that I'm doing, a fitness program that I do, I give a progress update. So I share my meal plan, how I feel during my workouts, if I'm sore, if I'm tired, how I can feel my body changing, what I'm personally struggling with. You know, I know we're approaching Halloween and there's lots of Halloween candy out there. How do you deal with that? You know, what do you do to keep yourself on track? How do you handle struggles that come up in life? I shared my real life journey and people connected with that. They want to know how you're doing it. So don't be afraid to share good and bad. People want to know what works. You know, there's that quote, and I'm sure you've read it a million times, but you don't have to see the whole staircase. You just have to see the first step, and that's it. That's what I follow each and every day. If you have a good idea, do it. Do it before that feeling, that intense feeling leaves you. You're much more likely to complete a task if you do it now versus waiting until later. So my second tip is to research and take initiative. As a new coach, again, I didn't have all the answers. I didn't know anything about social media, Facebook affinity, blogging, tweeting, Instagram, hashtags. Heck, I seriously didn't even know what a Facebook group was. But instead of sitting there and using my lack of education in social media as a reason not to be successful, I took that initiative to find out more. Everyone has access to the Internet and to Google search. So you can literally find an answer to everything with the touch of a button. So that's what I did. I Googled things. I went on YouTube, Pinterest. I searched for whatever it is I was looking for. If I wanted to know how to get my Facebook post seen more, I Googled that. If you want to learn how to optimize your blog, I searched that. If you want to know how to create timelines, banners, links, Google it. It's all there for you. I didn't put it off until somebody told me what to do next. A great leader is somebody that takes initiative. So as a coach, if you want to be successful, then find the ways that other people have done it. 
follow other popular social media gurus, subscribe to their YouTube channels, watch their weekly videos. I have a list of my favorite coaches whose styles that I personally identify with, and I follow them for inspiration. You know, what type of posts get a lot of likes? What things do they do? Um, what things do I do that I get a lot of likes? And how can I provide others with that better quality of service? I find that I did not rely on my sponsor to tell me what to do every day. After all, I'm my own boss, and I get to tell myself what to do every day. And I just went out there and I did it. I knew that the key to achieving success was to start challenge groups, so I did it. I asked questions on how to invite, how to share, how to enroll, how to handle my objections, and if I got stuck, that's when I went to my coach and asked them for help. Now we have this awesome Coach Basics program to tap into as well. So if you ask your sponsor coach if they're running a group, if not, encourage them to do so because you can learn from them also. But what I've seen in my coaches is that they all do the same thing. The most successful coaches don't wait for me to tell them what to do next. They come to me, they tell me what they're doing, and then I get to add a little bit of extra value to it. But they take the initiative to find the answer, to implement it, and to adapt it. Are you taking initiative or are you making excuses? The speed of the leader is the speed of the pack. If you want your own future team to grow and blossom, then be that example. I run my business this way, and therefore, my coaches do the same. So my next point is being a good leader means that you're always evaluating yourself. For example, the very first challenge group I posted out there to invite people to join, I got zero comments or likes. Talk about taking the wind out of my sails. I mean, I was pretty much devastated, um, but I didn't quit. It just took me a second to kind of regroup, you know, and it happened a second and third time. But instead of quitting, which would have been the easy thing to do, I took a step back and I just reevaluated my strategy. You know, clearly something that I was doing wasn't working for me. So I evaluate things like this, like the times of day that I'm posting. When are my friends typically online? Do my posts, do they seem like a sales pitch? Or maybe they don't have a clear call to action. Do you have consistent balance between Beachbody and your personal life? Am I giving people a glimpse of me? Or is it just all motivational posts? Do people know the real Melanie Mitro? The struggles, the triumphs, what I do to maintain my fitness and my business. There are days that I just take a step back in the evening and look at my wall. I scroll through my newsfeed and ask myself, if I were an outsider looking in, would people look at me as approachable, real, honest? Would they know that I live this healthy and fulfilling life, that Beachbody is a very big part of who I am? If not, that's when I tweak my strategy, and I try again the next day. I do a new technique or a new strategy for at least two weeks to see if it's really effective. And the one thing that is so hard for everybody to do is to be patient with that process because you know it won't happen overnight. But I know that people are watching. I know that even though I might not be rolling in with new customers, I'm creating a following. I'm adding value to the lives of others. And always remember to share versus sell. I tell my team to teach people how to live a healthy life, give your best and favorite tips, and that's what will build trust and lead people to enrolling in your challenge groups much quicker. Then to top it all off, a good leader never keeps secrets. A good leader shares what they learn and also teaches their coaches how to do the exact same thing. It's not every man for themselves. A good leader shares their secrets because they want their team to reach success as well. So my last tip is really that leadership is not a sprint, it's a marathon. Being a leader doesn't happen overnight. It's sometimes painful, scary, and hard. Being a leader takes energy and perseverance and time. It means that you lead with excitement and passion, even on days you don't feel like it. There are times when maybe I don't agree with a situation that comes up, but instead of playing into that negativity train, I find something positive in everything. I take the high road, and I lead by example. Building a successful business means that every day you are just excited about what you're doing. You wake up each morning with the feeling that something amazing is about to happen. Someone once asked me if I was tired of explaining what a challenge group was or answering questions or checking into groups, and I said, absolutely not. What if one day I send an email in response to somebody that is just crying out for help and is waiting for me to respond? And I'm their last hope. 
and I come along and I give them words of wisdom, guide them, and help them to change their life. That is what makes me get up every single morning and do what I do. I was reading last night something that really stuck out to me, and it said your income is a direct reflection of the lives that you change. That's so true. That has been the focus of my business. You know, it's never how quickly you can earn money or advance in rank. I mean, of course that thought crosses your mind, right? But every time I start to drift that way, something inevitably pulls me back and reminds me that your focus is first and foremost always the people that you help. And when you help others, you're going to be rewarded greatly. I have a quote on my whiteboard. It's in my office. And it says, never build a business so that you can be better than someone else. Build a business and create a huge life so that you can help more people. So be fearless, follow your heart, and lead with passion. And if you do those things, others will follow you. You will naturally rise to the top, and you will have a stable foundation for your business, which is going to lead you to long-term success. And it all starts with a choice to start now. Be a leader today, and even when you don't feel like it, and you will be greatly rewarded for your honesty and trust. Melanie, some some great points there. I, I I'm going to go back to this one that right at the beginning that you shared about not being ready because I think that's where, when people see you do that, they're going to be willing to do that. And of course, you just continue to to build there. You've done a lot of phenomenal things in these in these two years uh, that have I'll use the word blessed that have benefited, blessed your you know blessed your life. Um, why don't you just talk real quickly? We've got just a minute or two left here, but just talk for a minute what that's meant to you. We're talking about building a business, but we're building a business to create a life. What kind of life has, has Beachbody allowed you to, to create? So, as I said at the beginning, you know, we, we live a comfortable, we lived a comfortable life. You know, we didn't have a lot of fluff, but we also didn't have a lot of extras. And so, um, one of the goals on my dream board when I started as a coach was to pay off my student loans. And, When my husband and I sat down and were really planning our financial future, he said that it was going to take us until our our son Landon, who is four, until he went to college to pay off our student loans. And this year, we paid off those student loans, and we were able to wipe that debt away. And now, my goal as a coach is just to be able to provide extra for my family, so that if we need something, we don't have to worry about how we're going to make ends meet or, you know, how we're going to be able to do the extra stuff. I just want to know that at the end of the day that I'm able to provide a life and comfort for my family, that we can just live the life we want to and not have to worry. I mean, that is just such a huge weight lifted off of our family and our marriage to know that that's not even a concern anymore. And that I can do something that I love every single day and that I'm rewarded this this great for doing something that I love. And that at the end of the day is all I want for my family. Well, that's those are those are tall orders, but they're great mm-hmm. orders and obviously you've been you've been successful so far in making that happen and if the past is a predictor of the future, no question. Uh, that you'll achieve those goals and be able to provide that great life that you're that you're talking about, Melanie. So thank you so much today for joining us and for sharing these tips, really about how you started the business, but also the the, the concept of what does a leader look like, what does a leader do. So uh, some great some great pointers. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for having me on the call. You our pleasure. Thank you. And I know we get to hear from you next week a little bit too, so that'll be great. Awesome. Well, Coaches, uh, some great pointers. I, you know, Melanie ended her call by just saying, look, uh, there's lots of things out there, lots of things to do, but the one piece that she put an emphasis on was, you know, be a leader today and every day. Start today. I started my call with, with just a call to action of what are you going to do? How are you going to finish these, these, these four days? Melanie's given some great tips of things that you can focus on, things that you can do. And maybe, again, I believe one of the greatest tips is you don't have to know everything. You don't have to have your website perfect. You don't have to know everything, you know, where the end is and what that looks like. But, but you do know where the first step is, and you have to take that first step. And if you'll do that. If you'll make the decision getting off this call to do that, that's where your success begins. 
and it's not going to happen unless you do it. No one will build this business for you. So it's dependent upon your discipline, on your decisions, and on your vision of what you want your life to look like. We've got a great business. We've got great leadership in this business. We're changing people's lives, helping people change their lives uh, in a very, very real way. Um, it's, it's through real nutrition. It's through real fitness. It's through real support. It's through products that really work. One thing I know I can say with great integrity to you is that you can always look people straight in the eye with great integrity and say, this is a company that is for real. But that's what it requires, real effort as well. So coaches, uh, if you want to live your dreams, if you want to achieve what Melanie was talking about and having a great life, providing security, freedom for her family, really it starts today. So what are you going to do? What decisions will you make? It begins when you hang up this phone call. So thank you for joining us. Make the most of these last four days of October. You will never see them again in your lifetime. Make them count. So with that, I'm going to toss it back over to Sandy. Thanks, Jeff, and great job, Melanie. Uh, you will want to listen to this call again. We'll post it in about an hour on the playback line. So that number is 832-225-5065. Make it a great week, and happy Halloween. Bye-bye.